and it's lovely to be back with you once again. Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 12th of September, 2017. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk, boys and girls, coming to you live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. How have you been? Can you believe it's like a year, and a year, a week since we spoke live? Over a week. Apart from, of course, those of you who watch the, um, uh, uh, the live Facebook uh, streaming that we do. Lovely night last night at the karaoke, I have to say. Um, for some reason, we're getting a lot more people watch now the Facebook, uh, uh, the live Facebook stream uh, from the karaoke. Uh, like over a thousand people now <coughs> are watching that. So that's nice, isn't it? It's nice for the little starlets that take the time and the trouble to come out to the karaoke nights. It's 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 lovely for them uh, in particular. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with the people that came out. And yes, this storm. My God, did you see the rain coming down last night? In the camp, in where was I? King's Cross last night. Absolutely pouring down. Apparently, uh, Mark, who's one of our singers, he does stuff like um, what was he? What did he do last night? He did meatloaf. It's all coming back to me now. And I think he does Les Mis and things like that. Uh, Mark is really good at the, is best at the rock stuff. I think um, karaoke singers, indeed all singers, you have to find your your sort of genre, don't you? I think but for me, I personally think that Mark is best at the rock stuff, like Bon Jovi, you know. Oh, living on a prayer and that sort of thing. That's my only personal preference. But uh, he was saying there was a big storm in Hendon last night, which is where he was uh, before he started coming over. So that's nice. Uh, thank you very much for your nice comments on the music and chat show. The radio show, show, the radio show that I do every Monday now, boys and girls. Now that's at ten o'clock every Monday morning, um, and I've done two so far. Very nice of your comments to send them through privately. Uh, Wendy was asking if we can do requests. Yes, indeed, but it's not live, so you'd have to send your request in before. I, mean, I don't know if you can be bothered to do that, but you have to. You'd have to send in your request before, and um, uh, uh, I, I usually record Monday's show probably on Thursday or Saturday sometime like that but you can't see that one live that's recorded so that's a music and chat show now if you ever miss it you can do a listen again thing that's very easy I'll put up a link on my Facebook wall uh, there's one up there now I, th I think it's like two maybe the next one below this show okay so you can see the link for the uh, upload radio thing there um, I was very pleased uh, actually Sunday night <clears throat> I just finished doing a karaoke on Sunday night and it says, laptop update. Do you wish to update this? Now, I've learned from this. I learned from this because about a year and a half ago, you may remember at the Golden Lion. Uh, no, it was about a year ago. About a year ago at the Golden Lion. I'm not there anymore in, in Camden Town. Uh, the computer requested to do a, 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 a laptop update. And this is this is before the most recent Windows 10 update. Now, the recent Windows 10 update now allows you to pick a time when it will update. This time last year, you couldn't do that. It says this computer is restarting in 10 minutes or something like that. Anyway, it said it was going to do this. And I thought, OK, fair enough. Uh, this was while I was at work, just before I was going to start a karaoke. I say just before, it was about 45 minutes before I was going to start a karaoke night because I like to be all ready and everything's like. So this, this laptop's telling me it's going to do an update. I thought, OK, I'll, well, I'll restart it now, you know, because it's like another 45 minutes before I start doing the karaoke tonight. That'll give it time to, to do its thing. And uh, so I restarted it and uh, I waited half past eight. I start at nine o'clock and I waited. Quarter to nine. Well, it can't be much longer. Nine o'clock, nine fifteen, nine. F and, and it didn't finish updating until about ten o'clock, ten fifteen. And uh, I had to get a spare laptop out. Laptop out. Oh, it was a nightmare. And it was a special night as well because people were coming down to celebrate uh, eleven years of United Kingdom talk. We've been doing this show eleven years now. And oh, it, it was uh, it, it was it was close to the worst night I've ever been at work. But we got through it. And actually, you know, I got a feeling the people down the back probably didn't notice any difference because I had a spare laptop. And with the spare laptop, <clears throat> it's 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 for me, it's not as smooth operating as using the one I usually use, if you see what I mean. OK, maybe to the people out there, maybe they didn't even notice 
except for me saying, I'm sorry, it's not like it normally is tonight. You know, we got through the night, all right. But you see, that, that update, it kind of took about two hours. And I learned from that, never, ever do an update when you're just at work. And I'm so pleased because I, 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 um, I worked on this on Sunday night. I said, do you want to do an update? And I said, no. Set your update time. And I set it for one o'clock in the morning. Knowing I was finishing at 11 o'clock at night. I set it for one o'clock in the morning. So I finished the job on Sunday, shut down the, the laptop, took it home. Monday morning, yesterday morning, I opened it up. I thought, well, I'll do that update now. So I started it doing the update. Hour and a half. It was another big one. Hour and a half update on the laptop. So there is a lesson for you all. Perhaps I could mention this to Father. Father, uh, Father David for mentioning at the Mass next Sunday, you know, to, to learn as part of his sermon. The Lord saith, never do an update while you're at work. <laughs> So yesterday afternoon, uh, it finished, you know, and it, it did take about two hours to do this update. You you watch the thing going forward, don't you know? One percent. OK. Ten minutes later, two, well, not ten minutes, but you know what I mean. And so I'm so pleased I did that. There's a lesson. But now, as I say, now with the latest Windows update, uh, uh, you can choose the time that it happens. Uh, whether or not you can change that later on, I don't know. You know, if you was to set it for like one o'clock in the morning and you thought, oh, I need to do something now. Can you set it further ahead? It probably only allows you to do that so many times. Uh, so that was the uh, uh, karaoke last night and the updates. Uh, just a little bit of technical news, those of you that are interested. We've had a couple of people. I think it was. Let me have a look. I think it was. Oh, what's his name now? Bre Brendan Brady fan. Brendan Brady fan who watches a show on YouTube. He watches the recording on YouTube. And he was saying, can you come back on YouTube? It's better quality and all that. Well, yes and no. The thing is, everyone watches on Facebook now. So to go back to YouTube, you lose everyone again. You've got to start from scratch. However, uh, so we will stay on as we are now on Facebook Live. However, I have found a service called um, Re... Restream. Restream. And this service, you stream the show to them, OK? And then they restream it to several different people, including uh, YouTube. What's it? Is it is it something called Tumblr, I think? Twitch, Facebook, Twitter and all those. And it will stream to them all at the same time. You stream lots of all these um, live video services that are available now on the internet. So I'll look, I'm going to look into that for you, OK? So then perhaps we can be on lots of different things all at the same time, which would be good. I think that would be good, all right? So thank you very much for that. Just a couple of YouTube messages coming in. Uh, since the weekend shows, you may, we may have seen the weekend shows. Uh, last night at the proms. Oh, yes. Royal Britannia. Uh, Britannia rules the waves. Uh, Jack says... Hello, Chris. Hope you had the most fantastic time at the proms. Maybe one of the years I will get to the country of my family's ancestors that I could also go to them. Well, yes, Jack. I mean, you'll certainly get, you'll be able to get easily tickets to go to the normal proms because the proms last for a number of weeks. Is it eight weeks, six weeks leading up to the last night? OK, you'll be able to get tickets for those shows, the ones leading up. The last night of the proms is a bit different. Very difficult to get tickets. I was extremely lucky. Whether or not I'll ever go again, I don't know if I'll be able to do that again, you know, because um, it was someone who works there that had a couple of tickets become available at the last minute. So that's how I done it. And it, there was a lot of luck involved in Saturday night, an awful lot of luck. And, and the night actually went like a dream. Now, my mate drove us in. And we parked in central London. That can be a nightmare in itself. On a Saturday night, my God. Oh, we literally turned a corner and there was a parking space. Almost right outside the Albert Hall. I couldn't believe the Royal Albert Hall. So we, that was parked there. The afternoon tea was lovely. We just missed the rain. And we had the seats that we had. Fantastic seats. There's a lot of luck involved there, Jack. Don't know if you'll be able to get last night the proms. One of the ways you can do it is attend five proms concerts on the weeks leading up to the last night. You then go in like a tombola, uh, 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 like a, uh, a raffle type thing, you know, and if your name is picked out, you get a couple of tickets. 
All right, that's how it works. So very difficult. But you should go to the Royal Albert Hall. Anyone coming to this country, seek out the Royal Albert Hall and go and see whatever's on there. Doesn't doesn't you know? You don't need to necessarily be Justin Bieber. Although I probably would travel halfway across the road to see that little topless body walking into my house. Yes, please. Justin Bieber, baby. Ba Does he do that one anymore? His music's very good now. Justin Bieber, don't you think? OK, so that's it. Uh, that's how that works, Jack. OK, uh, hello to uh, Doug, who enjoyed uh, the proms concert show. Very nice. Chris, thank you. Uh, Brendan Brady, he's the one that wants to see us on YouTube live at the same time. Fab Upload, enjoyed watching you on your visit to the Royal Albert Hall. So um, thanks very much. OK, um, I'll try and keep an eye in future on your... Uh, YouTube messages as well because often I miss those. I don't. It's so much to to remember all the time doing this. Weird cities commented on one of the holiday videos I sent up. Such a lovely family you have. I love the way that they all seem to tolerate you filming them. And <laughs> they just about do. They do now. I did do a video there. There was one I tried to do and it just wasn't happening. So so I didn't put it up. I think it was it was my sister. She she. Sometimes she doesn't want to be... She says, oh, I don't like the camera on me. She does her own bloody cooking shows with her husband. And she says she doesn't like me filming her. Blooming cheek. Anyway, so they do tolerate the filming. In the years ahead, they will be very glad you, that, that, that you did, though. These years pass so quickly. Uh, you're absolutely right. They do. Time goes like that, doesn't it? It just disappears so quickly. I wish I had some photographs, more photographs of me. We didn't have videos, of course. Well, we did, but it was horrendously expensive and, and not instant. This is the beauty of this stuff now, isn't it? You just get about a mobile phone, it's done. <clears throat> Push a button, upload, it's there. What you've just done, 10 seconds later, is on the world for all to see. How clever is that? With that technology, I wouldn't be able to sit here and have a chat with you most mornings, would I? I just think it's brilliant, some of it. Not all of it. There's some nasty stuff as well. Have you heard of the have you heard of the dark web? <laughs> Apparently there's a dark web where there's all sorts of nasty stuff on there which we're not really interested. Um in but to talk to you like this. But I wish I had some photographs, in particular, of the years between sort of twenty and forty. Now there is a few up there, but there's I used to go to this club called Turnmills in uh, London, and I wish I had some pictures, or perhaps it's best that I, you didn't have the pictures of me in there. <laughs> Off me head every night. <laughs> it's about 20 years ago. Wonderful, wonderful place. Let's say hello to uh, some of you who are with us this morning then. Good morning to Adam the Plumber joining us. Good morning, Adam. Uh, Gustav says, good morning, Butch. Is this a proper studio show or one of your dogging videos? I don't have a dog, Gustav. Why, why are you obsessed with dogs? Why? Have you got dogs yourself? Or do you look at yourself in the mirror and think you are one? Which is it? You're just obsessed with dogs all the time. Good morning to Ray Reynolds, uh, who enjoyed the uh, karaoke last night. Did you sing three times last night, Roy? Ray, that was nice last night. You saw Ray Reynolds in the live video stream last night playing the ukulele or the uke. The uke, as they like to shorten it. Daniel Rolf is with us in Cambly morning. Christina uh, Remut Ulla. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Remut. Good morning to you. Mary, a non-Irish Mary, uh, is with us. Now, Mary is the one who bought me the Union Jack jacket that you saw on Saturday night's uh, Sunday Sunday's show. My Union Jack jacket for last night of the prom. So thank you for that, Mary. I knew that would come in useful eventually. You see, it's all down to you. All down to you. Rod Brown, um, the Americans kept offering me money for the, for the jacket. Can you believe that? And I'm like, so it was only 20 quid. Like, wow, 20 pound for that. We'll give you 50. I said, no, it's not for sale. Might have to use it again when I attend something else. <clears throat> you know, be, being a, a good, British citizen, good British citizen, as I am, you know, the European courts or the European Union might ask me to attend one of their events. I will proudly go in my Union Jack jacket. Or my union flag jacket. Oh, they had that vote last night, didn't they? Some vote, something to do with European laws that we adopt, and that's all gone through all right. We're on our road to Brexit. We're on our road. Now, what's that song? 
What's that? I've got to leave the European Union. I've got to leave the European Union. I got to leave the European Union and it's all gonna be all right. Bye bye, Mrs. Merkel. Bye bye, Unka. Unka. I mean, who has a name like Unka anyway? What a strange name, Mr. Unka. <laughs> and who's the other one who don't like us? That miserable old bald git with the glasses. Who's he? What's his name? Ghastly people, dear. Ghastly. Uh, good morning to Rod Brown. It is a lovely morning out there, Rod. A lot of wind on the way here in the UK. A lot of wind. Not as bad as Florida. Very bad in Florida. And uh, all over that Florida kiss. Did you see the state of the Caribbean? God. I mean, you know, you often... I bet if you've been to the Caribbean, you think, oh, it's lovely to live here and all that. Have you seen it now? Those poor people. And lots of looting going on and people stealing and... And criminals have got free from their prisons and things like that, haven't they? Anarchy out there. Awful. Uh, Mark, yes, there's Mark. Mark, good morning, Mark. Diane's there. Good morning, lovely Diane. Tony Powers there. Good morning, Tony. Uh, Christina says, Monday Manalo. Yes, we do a Monday Manalo song every Monday in the music, music and chat show. Now, what was it yesterday? I can't remember what it was. Was it It's a Miracle? I think it might have been It's a Miracle we played for you yesterday, didn't we? Yes. Uh, good morning to Keith George. Good morning, Keith. Uh, Ricky Doig. I don't even know how to say your surname. Is it just Dog? Doig? Doig? Ricky Doig. Morning from the sunny Isle of Wight. Yeah, he lives on the Isle of Wight, Ricky. Bless his heart. You know, everyone goes to bed there at 8 o'clock. Nothing happens. The most exciting moment on the Isle of Wight is the milk delivery in the morning. They look for, they get up early just to hear the little clinking sound of bottles outside their front doors, which incidentally they leave open most of the time on the Isle of Wight. There's no crime on the Isle of Wight. Well, at least there wasn't before Ricky got there, you know, going around stealing things, you know, stealing letters from letterboxes. Those postmen have a hard time, don't they? Don't you think? When they put the letter, it reminds me when I used to work for British Telecom. And there were some houses, you know, you'd knock on the door and, and there'd be a dog. You'd be like, you know, <laughs> dog barking its head off on the other side of the door, it would be. And you would, um, uh, there'd be no answer at the door, maybe no, no one answering there. And you'd put the card in, you know, you put the card in as you just, you just and you're aware of the dog. You, you you learn this very quickly if you're a letter person or a postman or you put cards indoors or those boring leaflets. You know, the boring leaflets, you know, from the pizza shop or the Indian or the Chinese or the fish and chip shop. Did you notice how I included everyone there? Very politically correct this morning, dear. Everyone's being included. Everyone. Everyone's being included. Everyone. Men or women. Yes. That's anyone, anyone. And you put this card in the door and and it, and it gets snatched out your hand by a dog. <laughs> it's frightening. You nearly have your fingers off when you put those cards in. <laughs> See how they deal with a bottle of broken glass. <laughs> Evil. So that's what Ricky does. He goes around, nick it, tries nicking. See, he nicks letters that haven't been pushed fully through the letterbox. See if there's any unused checks in there or something like that, don't you? Um, yes, Mary remembers the Tuesday uh, about a year ago when the technology failed. Oh, it did. It was awful. It didn't actually fail, did it, Mary? It was just this blooming update that would never finish. Dear me. Good morning to Bill. Good morning, Bill, who says, used to use Windows, nothing but trouble. Uh, virtual, do use Crash all the time in the middle of gigs. Went over to MacBook, been using for three years now, and not had a problem. Yes, Bill. Um, MacBooks, the best. I'm sure I, I agree with you. Apple are the best for DJing, everything really. But, but I think, Bill, once you've bought into a system, I've been PC for, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm barely PC. I'm not politically, I'm always upsetting people, Bill. Bill, I do this quiz night. <clears throat> I do this quiz night, King's Ed Theatre Bar every Wednesday night. 8 till uh, 10.30, 8.30 to 10.30. I've had two complaints in the last four weeks. Right, you ready? One, number one, I'm too gay. I'm too gay while I'm walking around doing a quiz. And then two weeks ago, I'm homophobic. Now, you see how they cancel out each other? Because people just want to moan all the time, don't they, Bill? 
Uh, so you're, uh, are you a, are you a DJ or a singer or something like that, Bill? You mu you must, you know exactly what I mean, don't you? They do, they just want to moan and moan and moan. And you never, ever hear me moan, do you, Bill? No, never. <clears throat> I totally agree with you. If you want to do anything professional, you're better off with Apple MacBooks and things like that. But... Once you've bought into a system, I have one, two, I've got two PCs here. I've got a laptop downstairs to change the whole lot over. No, it's not going to happen. And um, actually, Bill, uh, it, it wasn't the system that failed. It didn't fail. It just wanted to update. That's all it wanted to do. And once it had finished, you know, that was fine. I just did it at the wrong time. And with the new Windows 10, you can select the time that it does its update. So that's much better. Um... <clears throat> Uh, good morning, Wendy, who says, I've seen uh, Barry Manilow a couple of times at the Royal Albert Hall. Oh, it's great in there. The only thing is, <clears throat> with an orchestra, it's not as loud as you would imagine it, Wendy. That's the thing. When you go to the O2, where else have I seen Barry? Uh, I mean, Barry Manilow, really, I've only ever seen two, con two people doing concerts. One was Wham. That was back in the 1980s. That was at the Hammersmith Odeon. Then it was, what's it called now? Is it the Apollo? I think they've changed the blooming name. Why do they keep changing the name? Just call it the Hammersmith. We all know that place as the Hammersmith Odeon still now, don't we? We do. Um, that was Wham. That was loud. And I've seen Barry Manilow in various parts of uh, America. Orlando, New York, Vegas, here at the O2 and in Cardiff. And always it's blaring. It's so loud. And that's how we like it. You go to the Royal Albert Hall, you'd be surprised if there's a classical concert on there. You've got to keep quiet because you can't hear it. I was very surprised that the soloists. Now, this was indeed on Saturday night. Uh, you know, the lady, I think she was she was Swedish. Oh, she was great, weren't she? I liked her. She came across as very mumsy. Did you see her on the television last night at the proms? I think you can still get that on the uh, BBC iPlayer. Go and watch that. You won't see me on it. I'm right up there. That was very sad. I was a little bit disappointed. I thought I might be on BBC One Colour on Saturday night, but I wasn't. Oh, I thought at least a slow zoom or two, something like that, you know, where they zoom into me. Now, um, <clears throat> if you imagine the stage is here, OK, me and my mate, we were there. OK, so there's there's. There's, so here's the stage. In front of the stage are the people that are standing up. Now, those are very cheap tickets. It's a great place to be. That's where all the atmosphere is. Right in the middle, right in front of the stage. The tickets for that are very cheap. And you queue up for those in the morning. They are cheap tickets, OK? That's where the atmosphere is. But you're standing up for three hours. I don't... I think, I think I'll have a problem with that. Then there are the other seats around the outside. You've got boxes, OK, boxes. You've got like a circle there. Another, I think they're called circles, aren't they? The first one up, the second one up, and then the one right at the top. Now, we were in the second one up. We had a damn good seat. We could see everything. However, we were just, and I mean just out of camera shot. Now and again, you'd see the camera sweep around, and we, we don't know what what the camera's looking at. You, we, there isn't a screen for us to see ourselves. There are some screens in the Royal Albert Hall for you to see what's going on on the stage, but you don't see the other shots that you see at home. You know, when they zoom into... I thought at least a slow zoom on me. God's sake, there was nothing, dear. Nothing. <laughs> and when I watched it, of course, I rushed back home to put the video. Oh, I wonder if I've been on last night. And I'm watching it. And every time the camera almost got to us, and I knew it nearly got to us because next to us was a Russian flag. And there was a gentleman sitting right next to me. We were in a box. So there was, I think there was, there's the first bit up. Then there's the boxes. Then there's the second bit up. And then there's some more boxes. There's two lots of boxes. So I think we were in that one up there. Anyway, so, and you see this camera coming around, it's coming around like that, and he gets to the Russian flag, and it chops to another picture every blooming time. So disappointed. <clears throat> now and again, you do see our flags. I did see my mate uh, uh, flapping away with a flag. I was holding one side. I paid for that on Sunday. Oh, my word. No, was it Sunday? No, yes. 
Yes, Sunday afternoon, I had the most awful muscle ache here where I'd been holding this Union Jack and waving it backwards and forwards. But the blooming camera never quite got to us, unfortunately. So disappointed. But it was a good show, so that doesn't matter. Um, uh, let's have a look there. Where is it? That's, uh, that's Wendy. Uh, good morning to Robbie. Good morning, Robbie. Morning to Gary Butler. Good morning, Gary Butler. He's looking after his children at the moment. Uh, the wife's gone away a little while with, with the other little one, hasn't she? Good morning, Gary. Um, uh, Mary, you didn't, but you didn't make that jacket, dear. No, you didn't. You bought that jacket for me as a gift. I know you did. And thank you very much. Keith said he was in Florida. Oh, you didn't get blown away, did you, Keith? Mind you, dear, with all that weight, that wind's not going to take you off the ground, is it, my love? You got no worries. You can stand there in that hurricane. My sister, she looks at the wind if it comes her way and it turns round the other way. That's the power of the way my sister looks at people. It really is. Good morning to John True. Good morning, John. When are we going to see you at one of the karaoke's again, John? Come on. You'd like the Camden Eye. It's very Belushi's in there. You'd like that. Um. Ah, oh, oh, Bill's a country singer. Oh, OK. We had a few country tunes last night. 57 Chevrolet, was that one of them? Quite like country music. Years ago, I went to see George Hamilton IV. Did you know him, Bill? George Hamilton IV at the uh, BBC. He died, I think, a couple of years ago. My I, I like two songs uh, that he sung on the BBC show. I think this was... I think it was his late 70s, this one. He did uh, Country Music in My Soul. You must know that, Bill. Country music in my soul. People music for the young and the old. Da 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 Country music in my soul. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, I must put that on my iPhone. I haven't heard that for ages. And another one he sings, Bill, Canadian Pacific. Do you know that one about the train? Canadian Pacific, da 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 da, cross the train, rain and rugged mountains. That one. We like a little bit of cunt re music, don't we? We like cunt re music. We absolutely do. Thank you very much. Uh, Ricky says, I sang at the Royal Albert Hall with my school choir back in the year 2000. Have you still got the uniform, uh, Ricky? Have you still got your little school uniform? Do you put that on sometimes in front of the mirror? For your own benefit, do you? <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know, I don't think I'm going to have time to open the phone line today uh, because I've got an appointment this afternoon. Uh, my mate's coming around at 11 o'clock to pick me up and take me into London. <clears throat> um, he's got a lovely car at the moment. He's, his car is being fixed. Something I can't remember what he's having done to it. it he's it probably got a tiny little scratch on it like that. It's not like me, you know. If I get a dent or scratch, on it, I just carry on. I don't bother having it fixed usually. Can't be bothered. Although, my nephew, uh, Jimmy, he's 20. He's got his own business doing dents and that. You know, he, he bangs them out, fills them and repaints them. You never know there was a, there, there was, there had been a dent on the car. So I'll take that up to him now. Um, but before that, I wouldn't bother with scratches. My mate, completely different. The tiniest little mark on the car, he's in for a respray. Costs him thousands. Oh, I've dropped the pen. Where's that gone? I just dropped my pen. One minute. It costs him thousands. Uh, hang on. Where's that damn pen? God, oh, I can't get it now. Let's get another one. There you are. Can't be doing without a pen. Cost him thousands in having his car fixed all the time. Me, the last car I what was it? A Yaris last time. When I took it in for trade, he said the bloke says I can't believe this. Every single panel is has a slight dent in it. <laughs> Anyway, my mate at the moment, he's got a beautiful Mercedes. And let me tell you, it doesn't drive, it it glides. This car got a great big thing it was. He was really nervous when they bought it around. He said, my, look, he said, look at the size. It's massive, this Mercedes. Uh, would it be a five litre? Five litre car. It's beautiful. I've got to tell you, 70 grand's worth of car this is. And they've let him have it as a hire car. A loan car. God. When I take mine in, I'm lucky to get a blooming eye go. <laughs> Good morning to Mustjab. Good morning, Mustjab. Uh, welcome along to the show this morning, sir. Uh, good morning to Dave O'Rorty, a school friend, an old school friend of mine. I played the piano for him once. Um, 
he 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 was doing shows. I think it was a child show uh, in Danebury Avenue in Roehampton. That's where I grew up in the 1970s. It was a great place to live then, Roehampton. Absolutely wonderful place to live in the 1970s. Not so good now. I think there's a lot of drugs going on and just dodgy people walking around. Mind you, it's the same across London, isn't it, really? Um, Wendy's got to go. Bye-bye, Wendy. Thanks for joining us. And uh, yes, good. Now, what else have we got this morning? Uh, been watching. Oh, I wanted to read you a couple of items of news this morning. Are you ready with your iPhones? Who's one of those iPhone early adopters? Here's mine. I have an iPhone SE. A little iPhone SE. That's mine. OK, quite happy with this. The iPhone SE is the one. But a lot of people think it's the one after the five. No, it's not. <coughs> the iPhone SE is the one between the six and the seven. And I purchased that one in March. I never go to the latest model because it's horrendously expensive. You know, five, six, seven hundred. Quid. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to pick that pen up just a minute now. My, my blooming foot is rolling around on that. Good. Yes, so the iPhone SE is the one between the 6 and the 7. <coughs> uh, I never go to the, to the most modern one because it's really horrendously expensive. We're on 7 at the moment. Well, in the super soar away sun this morning, Apple today will launch the latest iPhone, which is tipped to be the first costing more than 1000 Pounds. Is it me or is Apple getting a little bit greedy? Their products are fantastic. We don't question that. As uh, Bill was saying, you know, the MacBooks, the iPhones, the iPads are fantastic. I've got a tablet, which kindly someone gave me. I, uh, what's the make of it? Is it here? No, I think it's a Huawei, a Huawei, a Huawei. A highway, 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 H A W A I. I think it's highway, highway. Is that how you say? I can't even say the word. You know, and it's slow. Oh, you you try and do something on it, and it's so slow. And if you take try and take a video, it's very laggy. So if you move across like that, it will go like that. You know, you, you'll see that bit and, and a bit behind it moving along. It's so slow. My mate's got the Apple iPad. He's had the... Oh, not the, the blooming pen's gone again. Where's that gone now? Oh, Christ almighty. Where is it now? I don't know where that's gone. Uh, he's had an iPad from the beginning. And I think he's on his third one now. And they just work fantastic. You know, moving in front of it. It's like it's you moving rather than just a reflection they work fantastically but a thousand pounds for the latest iphone they're talking about here uh, it's going to be called the iphone x and it boosts uh, boasts a major change of appearance and new features i think i could be doing with one of those don't you a major change of appearance do you think eh what could i have done to make myself look a bit younger <laughs> i'm not having any work done I've seen people who have had work done on their faces and they look horrendous, as you probably well know. Um, where is it now? Rumours suggest its screen will cover nearly all of the front of the device. Well, so what? Yeah, you know, so what? So what? It's also set to have a 3D face scanning camera. I'm not quite sure what that is, which can be used to unlock the device and authorise payments. Now, I'm a bit old fashioned with that sort of thing. I've got a credit card, which I use and I use cash. That's it. I don't use Apple Pay or Sage Pay or this pay or that pay. I won't even use the contactless thing on my credit card. Now, that's you've got to. Um, turn that on, so to speak. The first time you use it, you put it in the machine. I think you, you, you wipe it across and then you, it asks you for the number. That's how you activate it. I've never activated mine. I don't like the idea. I just keep thinking someone's going to walk past me and wave something at me and nick all my money. So I don't use any of that. It says um, the iPhone 8 and iPhone, iPhone 8 Plus are also set to be unveiled. So it must be three of them coming out. This is happening today. They're likely to look similar to the current iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, but include improved brains and cameras. So I suppose it's going to be even faster. But I find my 
<coughs> my iPhone SE is 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 plenty fast. When you're watching those live karaoke streams and all that, that's all done on the iPhone, you know. It's done with this. I've literally got this set up on top of a tripod. I've got the sound plugged into it and the power as well. And that sits up there like that. That's how you get the karaoke streams. There's no external cameras or anything like that. Here in the studio, I've got cameras. You know, I've got two cameras, one there and one over there. When you get that side shot at the beginning of the show. Uh, it says also, for the first time in an iPhone, there could also be wireless charging. So you put it down on a little pad. You see, you haven't got to plug anything in, <coughs> which is great because I'm sick of those wires going wrong, aren't you? Have I got one here? No. You know the little wires, the lightning cables? How many of those do you have to buy in a year? They all go at the end, don't they? Don't matter how careful you are. I've just ordered another four from Amazon, funnily enough. Um, there's going to be a new Apple iWatch, uh, uh, iWatch, 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 and 4K resolution Apple TV are reportedly due to be announced at the firm's Apple Park campus in California. Here I come. So are you going to be one of those, are you? Waiting, waiting for that iPhone to come out. <laughs> Please don't tell me you're not one of those people that queues and queues waiting for the shop to open so you can get your little paws on one of those first iPhones, are you? I do hope not. <laughs> Okie doke. So that's it. Been watching a couple of excellent programmes on the television, which I highly recommend to you. Uh, one is called Ambulance. I think they're on the third programme now. Uh, Ambulance, which is on... I think that's a BBC One show. I'm sure it's BBC One show. And a um, couple of things I've seen on there. There's one really selfless man, totally and utterly selfless, uh, who's got cancer of the spine, and he was on there. He was in the most terrible pain and he had to call the ambulance out because he was in, in lots of pain. And um, <clears throat> honestly, he's, he's on his bed, laying down, barely able to move, and he's joking with the ambulance people. And, and I, I, I always think this is how you deal with terrible sicknesses. You joke about it. You laugh in its face. For me, I think that would be the only way to deal with something like that. Anyway, gets in the ambulance, great pain, and he's laying there. And he's saying, well, he said, I'm trying to look at the good side of having this cancer. And the ambulance bloke says, hey, what, what do you mean? He said, well, I know it's probably not right to talk like this, but I've been able to cash in loads of things because I'm dying. And I've paid off the mortgage to my wife and my children's home. I've paid off the mortgage to, I think, two of his other children's homes. So he said there is a good side to getting cancer. And I thought, what a wonderful, selfless man he is to be able to think about it like that. At the end of the programme, at the end of the programme comes, they have these little stories about how what people have done and all that. And at the end of the show, <clears throat> they tell you what's happened to the person. And he had died. He had died. But what a selfless man he is. I, w I wish I could be a bit more selfless as well. Think about others before yourselves all the time, you know. Um, when he was in hospital, this bloke, the bloke who was having... You know, and they said, well, we're going to have to give you a little bit of treatment to take away the plane. Are you allergic to anything? And his answer was, yes, no, not allergic to anything, only the cancer. <laughs> he said he was allergic to cancer. Bless him. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful way to be able to deal with something like that, to turn the whole thing into a joke, even just as you're about to die. So that was that. And uh, there was a very amusing elderly lady in there, I have to say. Um, she had fallen over and she'd been in her ass for a while and uh, the ambulance men came and uh, uh, and uh, they got there. Come on up, you get love. Oh, 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 she's going, all right, all right take it easy. Take your time, darling. And the, these, these ambulance people, they're not just there um, fixing people. They have so much compassion when you watch some of them. So much compassion. I have to say, <clears throat> on visits to hospitals, generally all hospital 
staff and people like that have a lot of compassion. There's been a couple of nurses over the years that I've seen, not personally, uh, there was one that I dealt with when I had a burst appendix. She was bloody horrible. She was like the nurse from hell. She was horrible. And I don't know how some of those people get their jobs. But generally, medical people are compassionate, nice people. And certainly, these ambulance people were. And the ambulance driver himself, he was quite good looking. Very good looking, actually. And she says to him, she says, so have you got a girlfriend then? Now, this lady is probably about 75, 80 years old. The lad is... 28, 30 years old. He said, oh, yes. He said, in fact, we're getting married next year. She, she said, oh, I'm pleased for you, love. I'm pleased for you, love. And then it cut to an interview of her sort of slightly later with the, just the bloke doing the interviews. And she said, oh, you know that, you know that young... <laughs> She's still sitting on the floor now in pain. You know that young ambulance driver who was just here and the interviewer says, yeah. She, he says, yes. He said, do you know what? I'd love to slap his ass." <laughs> And I thought, me too. <laughs> so an excellent, excellent programme if you want to watch that one, boys and girls. Uh, Ambulance, OK? Ambulance, which I think is on the BBC One. A very good morning to Lisa, who is addicted to that programme. Yes, me too, Lisa. I think it's excellent. It's the first time I've seen it. I, ne I think there was a first series as well, wasn't there? But I never saw the first series. Uh, second series is great, so I'm watching that at the moment. Now, uh, something else I've come across. Now, I've tried various different air conditioning, not air conditioning, air smelling things in my house. Now, you may see that behind me there. Can you see that there? Okay. I've tried, you know, the stick-up things in the toilet. They're like little... Uh, it comes in a tube and you, you put it on the toilet bowl and you click a thing and, and for about two hours you get a nice smell out of it. Then it then it's gone. Then it's gone. I've tried the, the spray things. You know, that spray out every 30 minutes or whatever. Um, again, limited success with those. Oh, they're not that good. I've tried the little air wick things. You know, you peel off the thing at the front. And it lets out air. And again, for about an hour, maybe two hours, you get a very strong smell. Then that dissipates. These I bought while I was out with my sister shopping last week when we went out for a little birthday shop. They are little reeds. Oh, just beautiful smell. Now, so that's a bottle there. These reeds, you pull them out. And you turn them over when the smell stops. The thing is, I haven't turned them over yet. Now, this one is called Pink Champagne. I've got two. Pink Champagne. And downstairs, I've got Pink Rose or Rose or something like that. And the smell is lovely. And these have been going now for a few days. And I still walk in the house and I get the very strong smell coming from these. So if you've ever bought air, air freshener stuff before. You know, it's not that good. <clears throat> Try these. They're, they're reeds. I think I've seen them in Marks and Spencers. We've got a brand new Marks and Spencers here in uh, in Bracken. We've got all our new shops are open. Oh, I had our photo taken. While we, while we were walking around new shops on Friday, we had our photo taken. The lexicon, that's me and my mate there. Like, the lexicon in Bracknell. And they're doing free photographs. You know. Oh, you remember that fat queen? The fat queen with the bad hair and the terrible clothes. He was there and all. Giving out leaflets. That's what a superstar he is. Oh, he's dreadful on that video. Did you see it on my wall? Ghastly. Anyway, so they were going around doing these photographs and we had ours taken. But while I was there, I popped into Marks and Spencer's and uh, they've got these as well. Now, I didn't buy these in Marks and Spencer's but they've got exactly the same things in there. Actually, I think I saw these in um, Primark as well. I'm sure I saw these in Primark. So we popped into Primark as well. Wasn't in there very long. So I want to go back in there and spend a bit more time and look around what they got. But I've seen shirts in there. Seven quid. How do they do it for that? Little children's coats, you know, for look little two, three, four years old. Ten quid. Ten, oh, I know where they them I know where my great nieces and nephews are getting their Christmas presents this year. <laughs> now, actually, I don't buy them clothes. I, generally, I like to buy children toys, you know? And that whole Christmas thing 
where um, well, what 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 do you need for Christmas? No, no, no. What do you want for Christmas? What child? <clears throat> and please think about this before you go out and spend all your hard earned money on children's presents. What child actually wants to receive a pair of underpants for his birthday, or a little dress for her birthday, or a coat? Or a pair of shoes. What child below the age of 14 wants to receive an item of clothes for his birthday? Now, your answer to that shouldn't be, ah, oh, yeah, but that's what he needs. That's not what Christmas is about. Christmas is about having nice toys and things. They want toys. They want something to play with or something to entertain them. Don't go out and buy him clothes. Oh yeah, but he needs a coat. Well, we'll go and buy him a coat now then. I haven't got the money now. We'll go and buy it at another time, but don't give it as a Christmas gift. You know, if you want to buy a coat for someone for Christmas, fine, buy him a coat for a child for Christmas and give it to them, but not as a gift. That, that yeah, I just put that on. You know, and here is your Christmas present, which is a little train that you push around. Or a little doll's hair that you cut, or something like that. And don't, don't, don't you dare come back to me. Oh, that's not very gender neutral. And all that old blooming business going on in the news at the moment. They're all obsessed with gender at the moment on the telly, aren't they? Obsessed. I haven't decided. I've decided to be a cat. I'm going to be a cat in future. All programmes on United Kingdom Talk are going to be full of meowing. They are. Meow, meow, meow. Anyway, back to this. So there we are. Highly recommend. Get yourself some of those reeds and the little uh, smelling liquid stuff and they smell nice. And if they stop smelling, you turn the reeds around. You pull them out and you put them back in the other way again. And that's lovely. OK, so I, I just wanted to tell you that. The other thing I bought, I bought new tracksuit bottoms while I was there. Look, from Gap. They were reduced. <clears throat> How much were they? These were 15 quid each, these grey tracksuit bottoms. I know some of the lads like these, don't they? I shall wear a pair of these to the hospital later on, I think. Just in case I need to be thoroughly examined. I do enjoy that. Please, get, they, they've stopped examining me there. Oh, are you doing any examination? No, we're not examining you, sir. <laughs> People go into hospitals just to have that done. I swear they do. They just want examinations. It's shocking. It really is. Okay. How are we doing on time? We'll have to wrap up very shortly uh, uh, today. Uh, Lisa says, the first series I downloaded on Sky, it was inside the ambulance, the first series, but it's fab, so addictive. Uh, I haven't got Sky, Lisa. We can't afford Sky television here. Have you gone mad, dear? There's no Netflix, nothing, nothing. Free view and free setups. What are, I refuse to play for television, Lisa. When I was a child, everything was free. There was no payments for watching films and, you know, paying something to watch the boxing on all this business. It's outrageous. It really is. OK, right then. I think we'll uh, wrap up there, boys and girls, because I've got to have a shower and uh, get ready to be taken into, uh, into London by my mate. We'll probably have a little meal out. I think we go. I'm going to Hampstead. The Royal Free Hospital is where I attend. Uh, a couple of times a year, I go there just for checkups. And um, uh, there's a lovely little cafe restaurant called Dominique's in um, in Hampstead. And just before you go up this steep hill, it's there, and we'll probably go in there for a spaghetti arabata. Arabietta, arabata. I can never say it properly. A spaghetti arabata they did me last time. Oh, it was hot. There's no point in doing a chilli sauce unless it blows your head off. I like my lips to be tingling with burn and fury and fire after I've had a nice chilli dish. I'm vegetarian, so uh, I might uh, ask and see if they're going to do one of those for us today. We did go in another place there called the Hamster Tea Rooms. Honestly, it was so long. We gave up waiting in the end. I never forget that. Now, that, admittedly, this is a number of years ago, probably about six or seven years ago. We went into this Hampstead Tea Rooms uh, for something to eat. We ordered something, and the car was parked, you know, further up on a metre. And I went, wait, you know, and after about half hour, we had to go. And we were going to have to go. Well, you'll have to pay for the meal. We're not paying for the meal, but it's cooked. Well, you should have bought it quicker. We've been waiting on a car, but you didn't say anything. We didn't expect to be sitting here half hour waiting for a bowl of soup. It was a very simple meal. It was something like a bowl of soup or something like that. We gave up in the end. 
gave up waiting. So that's where I'm going this afternoon. Now, uh, on the program, we always, if you're new to the show, welcome along. And uh, can I just thank those of you that share the program onto their walls as well. That's always greatly appreciated. And thank you very much for those of you that have uh, shared our little show onto your walls. Now, what was that? I just heard something ding then. Oh, is it that one there? Oh, it's someone at my door. Can you hang on a minute? There's someone at the door. <laughs> Back in a tick. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> it's my mate. He's arrived early. OK, so I opened the door. I looked on the floor, just outside the door. I said, ah, what's that? He's trodding cat muck. Oh, he's trodding cat muck. And it was just about... It's a good job he didn't have his own keys because it was just about to walk the cat muck into my house. Oh, how awful. Oh, and the smell is awful, isn't it? Cat muck. Dreadful. So he's downstairs. Uh, oh, do you know, I can... I can smell it now. I, I kind of... No, I didn't go outside. I can, I can, I've still got that smell in my nose. You know when you get a vile smell and it hangs around inside your nose for a while? Oh, it's awful. <clears throat> anyway... Once again, as I was saying, thank you very much to those of you that have uh, bothered to share the show on your walls this morning. That's very much appreciated. Always on the show, at the end, we do people's Facebook birthdays. If you're new to the show, I'm just mentioning this. So if you're on my Facebook as a friend, I will get your birthdays come up. And we always read those at the end of the show. Slightly different on a Monday. Because on a Monday, I do a music and chat show. It's very, very lighthearted. And uh, I hope you'll find it's a lot of fun. You can find the link to the latest uh, upload radio show directly below this on my Facebook. Now, if you're watching the show on YouTube and you're not on my Facebook, you can join us on there. It's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And today's birthdays are number one at the top there, Mr. Jake Reed. Good morning, Jake. Happy birthday to you. Now, are you the Jake that I worked with for a while? Let me just check that. Is it, there's a little boy in a rugby. I can't believe that's you, is it? Oh, it is. Are you a rugby player? Well, I didn't know that. Now, I used to play rugby at school. And I was very good at it, actually, Jake. I played uh, uh, fullback. I don't know. I don't know if I can run around a pitch anymore. But uh, yes, I used to do that. I was fullback. The other lads couldn't get past me on that school playing field. No. Happy birthday to Jake Reed today. Happy birthday, Jake. I don't know how old you are. Probably about uh, 23, something like that. 23. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, happy birthday today to Joe Ashcroft. Hello, Joe. 30 years old today. How are you, sir? I hope your children's all right. Have you have you got one or is there more now? I remember Jake, uh, uh, Joe used to come into uh, Belushi's in Hammersmith when I used to DJ there, which is about three or four years ago now, isn't it? Happy birthday, Joe. Uh, are you still with the same lady? Do let us know. Uh, Mark Kempner is 49 years old today. Happy birthday, Mark Kempner. Hope you're well. See you in Central Station with some of the cabarets soon. And uh, Travis R. Uh, Hightower is, uh, has, has the... Has has the top A today with a, a wonderful 73 years old today. So happy birthday to you, Travis. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jake, Joe, Mark and Travis. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday. 
We all boys today, yeah, all boys today. Enjoy, enjoy your birthday today, boys. Uh, it is quite a nice day out there, but a lot of wind later on. Uh, should be back with you either tomorrow morning or tonight. I might be around for a late show tonight, sort of about 11 o'clock tonight. Don't know yet. Don't know where uh, how the day's going to pan out today. If not, I'll uh, probably see you tomorrow morning. Enjoy the show and th uh, enjoy your day. And thank you very much for joining me. See you again very soon. Bye-bye now.